If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with an absolutely, completely, 100% unfun deck for your opponents. Fun for you, not so much for them. And that's because we are running Mono Red Land Destruction. Whew! Now, I've run something very similar to this list in the past before, you can check that out, there's a uh, card. Uh, can link to the video, link to the playlist. Here we go, we're starting off with... <laughs> it wouldn't be modern land destruction without stone rain, would it? Speaks for itself, destroys a land, any land, pick a land, any land. Doesn't have to be non-basic, which will matter in a bit. You already know where this is going. Uh, next we have Molten Rain. Destroys any land once again for a slightly more restrictive mana cost, but if that land happens to be non-basic, Molten Rain deals two damage to that land's controller. Alright, I'm going to skip ahead just for a second to show you... <laughs> okay, we have Blood Moon. We have Blood Moon in the list. These are all four ofs. Four of Stone Rain, four of Molten Rain, four of Blood Moon. We are going to be that person. We're going to destroy their lands or destroy their lands. Blood Moon is a nightmare for a lot of decks to have to deal with. They just simply can't. <laughs> but it's a card that gets better as the meta gets more developed, actually. If you take Blood Moon to your local FNM, you may come across a lot of basic lands and that just won't do anything. Or burn, mono red in general, tends to be fairly cheap. Blood Moon doesn't help you there. Otherwise, though, you get to punish these complicated mana bases that don't afford too many basic lands. Now, this is modern. Pretty much every deck is going to be running basics because Path to Exile is a card. And so there's always something that they can uh, fetch out, something that they can go and get with Path. Given that, every deck has an out to Blood Moon. Most decks, though, unless they see it coming, are not going to be able to do anything about it, and even if they do see it coming, the Sword of Damocles, that is Blood Moon, means that they might just go and get a basic when that's not the land that ideally they would be getting. For three color, four color, greedy mana bases, that advantage in and of itself, just the threat of Blood Moon, can keep them off of it. So that's what we have on that front. Uh, next, I am running the budget version of this is Avalanche Riders. Shout out to, <laughs> to Darwin Castle for being awesome like that. Four mana, haste, echo for three in red, so same cost, but we get to destroy a land when it enters the battlefield. That's awesome. Now it's destroy any land. Any land. Uh, unlike, so as opposed to Fulminator Mage. So three mana, same power and toughness, what we're losing. We're losing haste, for whatever that's worth, and we're also losing the ability to destroy basic lands. And this can be important, it isn't necessarily all that important, uh, because Stone Rain and Molten Rain can hit basic lands as well. I keep Fulminator Mage in because I have them, and because, well, it's Fulminator Mage, right? Three mana versus four mana. There's a reason why this is what you see in Jun's sideboards and not Avalanche Riders. So, that's awesome, that interaction there. Uh, land destruction, land destruction, land destruction. These will all hit basics and then Blood Moon to shut down the non-basics. We're being mean. <laughs> We're being awful, aren't we? But, that being the case, it gets even better, or worse, depending on which side of the table you're sitting on. We have Goblin Dark Dwellers. So when this card was spoiled, people noticed, hey, wait a minute, you can actually use this to cast Ancestral Vision from the graveyard. Uh, that's true. You can also cast Stone Rain and Molten Rain. So you can just, in a perfect world, go uh, three drop Stone Rain, destroy land, four drop Avalanche Riders, destroy land, five drop Goblin Dark Dwellers, flashback Stone Rain, destroy land. You can just destroy all of the lands, and then you have a 4-4 four, four Menace creature. At this point, hopefully the opponent is just, I think the technical term is, 
screwed. <laughs> Just royally screwed. So, it looks like this is actually six cards, this is really five. Pick between the Avalanche Riders and the Fulminator Mages, or some combination, perhaps. In a budget version, the most budget you would run, four Riders, uh, as you have the funds to do so, four Fulminator Mages. Maybe keep in some Darwin Castles. Uh, it's not strictly worse. Of course. Now, these are all four ups, and I'm also running four lightning bolts because this is a red deck. We need something to do against Zoo, against Infect, against Affinity, something low to the ground. We need to be able to stop them, and it can just push us over with a little bit more reach. That's true as well. Uh, that's sort of, it speaks for itself, right? It's the most played card in modern for a reason. But along those lines, we also have Pyroclasm. So, we have a bit of an issue in this kind of deck, and in land destruction in general, outside of Legacy, which gets Wasteland. Our problem is that we don't really do anything crazy until turn 3, and even then, what we're doing doesn't hurt the opponent so much if they already have a board presence. This is especially important when we're fighting against uh, tokens, against Zoo, against Affinity, sometimes against, like, Infect or Soul Sisters. It just isn't that consequential. What we need is something to clear the board, something to wipe away those tiny plays that come out so early against us. Pyroclasm as a 4 of is one way of going about doing that. Just 2 damage all around, doesn't hit Zoo, hits basically everything else about which we'd be worried. We take it out against the control decks, obviously, you get the idea. And 4 Anger of the Gods, because more rats. <laughs> This is just another sweeper. This one will hit Zoo. You know, it sort of just speaks for itself, right? Three damage all around. Uh, so, again, these are cards that one can go and get with Goblin Dark Dwellers if you just absolutely have to get extra damage instead of more LD, which you might have to do in certain lower to the ground matches. But against mid range, against control, just in general, the archetypes mid range and control we should be getting out early enough that we're stopping their bigger plays from ever happening by virtue of simply destroying their lands. Now, we have Chandra Pyromaster. We're getting into win condition territory over here. One of Chandra just gives you some advantage, right, with a zero. You will get into a, a mode where you have already cast all of your land destruction spells and now you're just playing off the top. She helps you play off the top super well. Also, if you get a creature down, you know, Goblin Dark Dwellers, Fulminator Mage, just the plus can help you to not have to worry about being blocked as much, but usually that's not what we're using her for. Uh, against one toughness match, she'll poke the opponent's creatures. You know, it's, you're playing it mostly for the zero. But, if you happen to ult, exile the top ten cards, choose an instant or sorcery exile this way, and copy it three times may cast the copies without paying their mana cost. Oh hi, Molten Rain. Oh hi, Stone Rain. Eight copies. We're hitting ten cards. We're likely to just destroy three of their lands right off the bat. And if not, we hit an Anger of the Gods. That's nine damage all around. Lightning Bolt. That's three times three. You get the idea. That seems like it could be pretty hot. But Chandra's just a one of. She doesn't break any particular matches and she's just a nice win condition, but effectively all Planeswalkers are legendary anyway, so the next slot goes to Koth of the Hammer. So the plus is a real win condition, especially with some cards that we're getting to later. Uh, the minus zero, or minus two rather, uh, is great for, hey look at all these LD spells we have in our hand, let's just dump them out and uh, keep the opponent out of the late game period. So you play the Koth, you plus, Koth survives, still has two, minus two, hopefully Koth survives, you make at least four mana, right, usually four mana, plus whatever you have left to tap, and then drop a Stone Rain, drop an Avalanche Rider or a Fulminator, and just get so far ahead. That's where that's at. And then of course the minus gives an emblem so that your mountains will now deal damage. That's another, just another easy way to win. It gets you over prison locks, it gets you over, like, if there's an ensnaring bridge out, spheres of safety, that sort of thing. You get the idea. Next we have, this isn't really a win condition, this is an enabler. 
Uh, so if everything up here is LD, and these are utility, this would be the last utility card. We have Simeon Spirit Guide as a four of. <laughs> because there's nothing like getting out the turn two Blood Moon or the turn two Stone Rain and just working the game from there. Especially if you keep hitting your land drops. Uh, it just speaks for itself, right? Fast mana gets the job done. Now, for our lands, we are starting off with 17 mountains. I should note, though, this is 38 cards. Everything's a four of, except one of each planeswalker and pick uh, no more than four of these together. Uh, 17 mountains. You should either run Snow Covered Mountain to make your opponent think that you're playing Scred, or you should run this one because of the art. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm real mature, everyone. Real mature. Uh, next we have One Gemstone Caverns. Now this is interesting. It's a legendary land. I wouldn't want to run more than one usually anyway. If we are on the draw, and if this is in our opening hand, then effectively we start the game with it in play. We'll start the game as if it were a ley line, basically. It comes into play. It will get a luck counter, and it will tap for any color mana instead of colorless, but I will have to exile a card from my hand. Basically, you would have started the game, but I'm really, I really started the game. But because I started the game, I need to be down card advantage. That's how that works, right? The person who's going second gets the draw. And so to sort of make that more even, now you do get to choose which card you exile. What we care about with this card is that it enables not just the turn two Blood Moon, Stone Rain, Molten Rain a little more readily, turn one with Simeon Spirit Guide. Usually though, it's just, this is our fifth Simeon Spirit Guide, it's situational, it's a land, you, you get the idea, this is, this is fine, this is just another ramp spell that doesn't use a ramp spell slot, it's just a land. And next we have four Cathedrals of War. So our creatures aren't very big, but if you can manage to get one of your LD creatures or our Goblin Dark Dwellers out, this has Exalted. And if there's not a Blood Moon, swing not just four with Dwellers, but five, six, seven, eight. You get the idea. It turns your one creature into a much more serious clock. And if that creature has Menace, then they're all that more imposing, all that more threatening. The same is true of uh, Koth's 4-4s, four some sideboard cards coming out. I think it's really crazy with some sideboard cards. So these are the cards that comprise the main board. Again, everything is a four of, except one gemstone cavern, 17 mountains, one of each planeswalker. I've already given the spiel on these. Now, as for the sideboard, okay, so I actually have some, a, a fair number of flex slots in here. I'll give you some of the alternatives, but these are what I'm running right now. There's a one of batter skull. We bring in against control. You know, if they want to keep destroying it, we'll keep getting it back, keep getting our creature over and over again. We can bring it in against Burn as well, but it is a 5-drop, but it's in Source of Life Link. We may just have to. Uh, and with Exalted, this gets silly. This gets really silly. Uh, I've, on the channel before, played this against Tron, and it was outracing a Worm Coil engine. And this has Vigilance. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of where we would like to be. Uh, that being the case, no more than one. It's a five mana card. Yeah. I'm also running a one of Chalice of the Void. Because combo. Because combo is a thing. Pyromancer Storm especially. Uh, there are some lower to the ground decks like Zoo and Infect against which you can bring this in. I personally like that. But, of course, they're going to be able to cast at least one consequential spell before you get out the chalice, unless you're on the play and have Simeon Spirit Guide. Otherwise, they can get out the Glistener Elf, shout out to Glistener Elf, uh, they can get out the Curd Ape, the Wild Nacatl, the Goblin Guide, whatever the case may be. But where this really shines is in fighting combo decks. You bring this in against Pyromancer Storm, you bring this in against Ad Nauseam, Grishol Brand. There, there's a number of decks that this just automatically wrecks. I only have one, but maybe it should be more than a one of because it's just that good in certain matches. 
And if you don't believe me, there was a reason why the Eldrazi decks that were absolutely dominating modern were running those in the main board. Even in modern, where combo is gimped, it's nerfed pretty heavily, relative to, say, Legacy. Next we have a one of Grim Lavamancer for repeatable removal, just hits a lot of low-to-the-ground creatures, yeah. and helps us to get out through the over the Insaring Bridge or what. I, I don't know. It's it's situational beyond that, but it's it's for uh, hate bears. It's for infect. I keep ragging on infect because it's the kind of deck I know. I'm an infect main, uh, even though I don't have enough cards to play infect. Uh, without proxies right now in modern, as I would like to. I know from playing in fact you need removal, and you need gratuitous amounts of removal in order to have a favored match, but once you do, you're set. Lavamancer is just sick against those. And it's other low to the ground decks as well. Not really Zoo though, because of three toughness. That's the trick there. But it's repeatable, it's it's the two for one, three for one, depending on how long the game goes. Uh, next we have, against the control matches, Sarkon, the Dragon Speaker, as a one of. Uh, another reason why Cathedral of War is in the deck, Sarkon used to be in the main board, and it actually won me the Bogles match. Uh, just plus, gets haste, flying, indestructible, it's a 4-4, four -four, it's a dragon. <laughs> And it's a little bit harder to remove because your opponent can't kill it with sorcery speed, creature removal, they need instant speed, although this is modern, that isn't so much of an issue. Um, it has flame slash on it as well, and the emblem is awesome for this kind of deck. Draw two cards, yeah you discard at the end of turn, but you're not really keeping much up other than lightning bolt, you're not keeping anything up really, but the potential to just draw a land destruction spell every turn more readily Oh, that's so sick against certain matches. If you can pop that emblem against Jeskai Flash, against well, just control decks in general, just the Thopter Sword control decks, you've got it in the bag at that point. Sudden Shock for instant speed creature removal. Now, this should not be Sudden Shock, actually. I personally would have this be probably Boiling Seas or Boil. Now, there's a, an, a, an important reason why I put Boiling Seas first, and that is because Boil can be countered by Dispel. Even though you can get more out of Boil, Dispel actually sees a lot of play in Modern, especially in sideboards, blue sideboards, sometimes in the main boards even. However, you don't see Invasive Surgery, you don't see as much Negate, and even if you do, that's two mana, you get the idea. So playing Boiling Seas just gets us out of the Dispel uh, answer. Now that being the case, if you play Boil, you can do it at the end of their turn, where they could have gotten one additional land drop. So there is, it's certainly not the case that Boil is a worse card, it's just because of the metagame, you may want to play Boiling Seas instead. Functional reprints, except one is sorcery speed, the other is instant, and we're actually going to potentially use that sorcery speed to our advantage, or to our opponent's disadvantage. That being the case, in certain metas, Sudden Shock is where it's at. If you just need to remove a lot of creatures, then there you go. Easy enough. Can't respond to it. Done. Uh, here's another one. Sun Droplet. Obviously, this is what you use against a burn, in particular. I would actually bring in Dragon's Claw, I think. Oh, it's another thing I should I should mention really quickly, is that um, if you're not running Boiling Seas either, because of your meta, for instance, run Sewing Salt. No, not Crumble to Dust, Sewing Salt. And part of the reason is because Sun Droplet would instead be Dragon's Claw. I actually don't have Dragon's Claw right now, or at least I can't find it. Uh, but Sun Droplet is the kind of card you can put in, if you're any color deck really, against Burn. Dragon's Claw is for the red decks. If you're playing a red mirror, it will gain you life more immediately, and in this kind of deck, you know, maybe even more quickly than just a single Sun Droplet, which is doing you one a turn, Dragon's Claw can get you, you know, two a turn, certainly pretty readily. Uh, and of course, if you cast the Dragon's Claw, you can cast another spell, a red spell, and get something out of it that turn, do it with Sun Droplet, and sorry, you have to take damage first. Uh, 
Dragon's Claw, I think, is perfectly fine. I think that it's great burn hate in a red mirror like this. That being the case, there's so much LD in here that does not work against burn. Have you noticed that? Mono Red Burn uh, in particular, not so much the Naya or the Jund Burn decks that we see sometimes, but Mono Red Burn. Blood Moon does not do jack all against them except to turn their fetch lands into mountains. Everything else is a mountain anyway. Not so much. So in those matches, Blood Moon comes out. Just a little meta tip for you right there. Uh, there's Sun Droplet for you. Or Dragon's Claw. Whichever one. Dragon's Claw preferably. If you go to a Rakdos version of this list, you may actually want Sun Droplet instead, but all of the, with one exception, all of the black cards in the deck that I've constructed anyway are also red. I'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, spoiler, by the way, for the Rakdos LD deck coming up. And lastly, for Vandal Blast. <laughs> so this is a card. This is... Shatterstorm, except, well, I guess they can be regenerated, but whatever. That at Most of the time, that's just insult to injury in modern. This is our Shatterstorm that is way lower, but also a little higher. We can use it in the early game, but in the late game, this is just the wrath for their entire board. But this gives us some cheap removal against Affinity, which we certainly are in sore need of. They can survive Blood Moon uh, pretty readily. All of their lands make colorless for all they care anyway. They use very little for actual color. They have Galvanic Blast, they have Thought Cast, they have Dispatch sometimes. Uh, but otherwise, and they have Springleaf Drum, even if we stick to Blood Moon. It's not such a good card. You're bringing, you're taking out four Blood Moons, you're bringing in four Bl Vandal Blasts there. Another meta tip for you. And this is the deck as I have it constructed right now. There is a Rakdos variant on it. I'll show you a sneak preview of it right away. So, you're not going to need as many uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers, Stone Rains, and Molten Rains. You're going to go up to four of each of Avalanche Riders and Fulminator Mages, and you're going to put in four Colagons commands. And all of the modes are useful in this deck. So, you can intentionally not pay the Echo cost on Avalanche Riders and be perfectly fine with it because you're getting it right back with Colicon's Command. And that may actually be what you want to do anyway, because you want to get it to enter the battlefield again to destroy another land. <laughs> oh, it's mean, it's mean. Colicon's Command, such a good two for one. Such a good two for one. Um, other cards that go in the list in the current incarnation that I have, I haven't done the sideboard for it yet, and I'll do a full deck tech later. There's Terminate and there's Inquisition the Kazale. Now, Terminate sort of speaks for itself. Why Inquisition? And the reason is because you don't care about CMC 4 or greater usually. If you do, you might be losing the game anyway. And that's because with your land destruction, you should be keeping them off of that anyway. You should be keeping them off of being able to cast their four mana or higher spells in the first place. You just disrupt their early place with Inquo, LD, and then go to town. Alright, so I am getting really excited if you can't tell. This is a fun deck to play. Well, uh, okay, it's fun for you. Your opponent, not so much, but we've covered that. I have a lot of fun playing it. I, I think it's, it's true. <laughs> it's not necessarily neutral. I find it fun, and it can be good. In the right meta, this can be good, this can even be great. Take this to your FNM, see how far it can take you. Uh, you can even, some version of this, I am 100% sure, can make it in leagues on MTGO, can make it at uh, PPTQs or something like that. Again, it just depends on the meta. You need those greedy mana bases, you need those higher curve decks. You need them to want to be running cards like like Siege Rhino, like, uh, like Tassiger, like, so, like Sword of the Meek and Thopter. You want them to run Celestial Colonnade. If every deck runs Celestial Colonnade, you can do well. So well. Anyway, that all being the case, I hope you've enjoyed this deck tech. If you want to see more of these, subscribe to the channel. That's only like the second or third time I've actually made a shout-out to subscribe. Uh, a call to action, there we go. I don't do that too often. I hope I hope you're fine with that. I don't want to... I don't know why I said that. I don't want to make this anything other than the deck tech itself. 
except I am right now. The longer I talk, the longer it's not, so we're going to wrap this up right now. If you have any suggestions for the deck list, shoot them into the comments. I would be happy. I'll read them. Maybe I'll even update the deck if it's worthy of that. Uh, if your inclusion is different enough that it needs me, if I need to terraform this deck. Uh, again, look forward to Rakdos in the future, and if you have any ideas for your own deck techs that you would like for me to make, check out the Patreon. If you donate, then you are guaranteed to get a deck tech every single month for as long as you're donating. Uh, otherwise, put an idea in the comments below, and I will see you later. Take care, Magic Community. Bye-bye.